Well, welcome, folks. And we are off. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome. This is going to be the last study for probably a, a week or so. I'm going to take a little uh, escapade out to the, the, the wide, wide open. I'm going to go see Brother Clint uh, up in Utah. Um, so this week, um, I had planned on getting into the Lee Bear Codes, Article 38, uh, birth certificate, warehouse uh, receipts, and, and things along that line because that was the stuff that I wanted to talk about. But due to the overwhelming response of emails and questions and everything else, and uh, just like my grandma walking in here uh, giving me her worries, th this, this study is about empowerment, taking back what's ours and moving that mountain moving that mountain, moving that kingdom back to the kingdom of righteousness, back to the Father where it belongs. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this fellowship again today. Let the seed fall on good ground. Let it bud forth and bring forth great fruit. And let your word not return unto thee void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything and everywhere that you send it. In your precious Son's name we pray. All right, guys. O ye of little faith, John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, also believe in me. And here's the thing. What's trouble? What's worry? What's fear? These are the opposite of faith, honesty, honor, truth, integrity, belief, knowing. These are the opposite. So if they are the opposite of peace, love, joy, they come from the opposite side, the negative side, which is low vibration, low frequency, Satan, whatever, whatever emanation you want to put, put on it, it's not of the Father. First, we want to do a prayer request in the channel watch. Brother Stephen, uh, he's on the forums. His brother Stephen, the Hebrew. Uh, his sister Sherry is the one who defeated John, uh, not, I mean, Lupus uh, with the MMS. He's done a few, really, really couple good presentations on his channel. His channel's called Come Out, Come Out of Her, My Sheeple. Uh, he's doing the Lee Bear Codes and stuff like that. If you are, if you are really about correcting your status, uh, with this system, uh, Brother Stephen, someone to really watch. Um, and here's the key, man. All the other stuff matters not. If you haven't taken back the mind yet, if you haven't captured that, all the, the black magic, the hexes, the curses, all the other stuff, you are still susceptible to. You still allow them to come and sit inside the kingdom, inside the subconscious mind. If you capture back your mind, the body will follow. We want to talk about Brother Tom. This was heartbreaking considering the, the subject last week. Uh, the subject matter last week uh, was a, about helping people out of addiction. Brother Tom left me a, 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 a message last week. About two hours after I posted that study, his brother died from an overdose. And listen, folks. Listen to me. Brother Tom, you're in my thoughts. You've been in my thoughts all week. Uh, and what I want to I want to continue to say is for every one of you men and women out there that that's still in addiction. Look, we put a we put a we put a a, a tab on the on the on the forum. And listen, folks, the, the forum is is not but for y'all to start interacting with each other. I've got a load on my ch schedule already. I mean, I, I do as much as I can possibly do working a full-time schedule, being a full-time dad, and all these other things that I do. But it is for us to have somewhere to go and, and discuss. Uh, all these men and women in addiction, we want to start lifting them up. Okay? And I ask everybody out there, uh, when you see somebody that says they're struggling with addiction and you've beat it, hey, drop a line to them. Tell them give them some support. Uh, I can't answer all 1,000 comments every week. It's impossible, folks. It's impossible. I can't do it anymore. We need everyone to be sober and be vigilant. And the reason for that is because we're going to stay in our right minds. And let's do uh, Psalms 127. No better way to start off the week than recognizing and understanding before we start to study. Psalm 127. Except Yahuwah build the house. What, what house y'all think he's building? That's right. Except Yahuwah build the house, they labor in vain that build it. That means men labor in vain building that stone house of stone. Except Yahuwah keep the city. Where did I tell you Jerusalem was? 
Where's Jerusalem? Where's Zion? Y'all think it's the stone walls? It is not. The watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now remember, his beloved would be the, the bride, right? Because he's our husband, right? He's our first husband. You start understand, recognizing these things. He's the, the, the husband and we are the bride. He giveth his beloved sleep. What is that? My rest I give unto you. The peace I give unto you is not of the world. You go to sleep just fine. You wake up just fine. You don't eat from the bread of sorrows, the psychological torturers that are, that are eating us alive through this black cube. We're going to talk about that too. The true house, the altar of earth is us. Once you recognize that and quit fighting against that, you'll have some breakthroughs. False hope isn't hope at all, folks. Reliance on men, systems of men, will always leave you empty and void of life and love. Always. Reliance on the Father of all lights, in whom there is no variableness, will leave your heart filled with joy and peace. A peace the world cannot give. Now see, now the whole world's supposed to be up in flames and everything else. I've had Brother Gary here for, the, for two days? Two days. We went out to the sandbar. We rode around. We've gone everywhere. Heck, we went. He went and bought a, a, a motorcycle yesterday. Life carries on, folks. I'm just telling you, life's continuing on. Only inside the black cube is the world. Listen, folks. We're going to talk about this. The psychological torturers are continuing to torture the minds of the people. They will continue. All you had to ever do was ask for the peace. Sufficient is the evil of today. Why are you still worried about tomorrow? Why? Psalm 51, uh, 51, 7, Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. That means the inequity is gone. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine inequities. Create in me a clean heart. All right, so when you have a clean heart and you renew, that spirit is renewed, does the clean heart and the renewed spirit walk around talking about everything the world talks about? What does, the, what does that new spirit talk about? Purity. Purity, faith, hope, love. I, I, I don't believe it. I don't see the world you see, period. I don't see it. I don't see it. it why? Why don't I see it? Because the, the Spirit's been renewed. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Peace. God is our refuge, Psalm 46. God of our refuge and strength, the very present help in times of trouble. Therefore will we not fear, period. You either got the spirit of fear or you got the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. One of the two. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of that mind and that perfect, acceptable will of the Father. That's it, period. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, where are these mountains coming from? In the midst of troubled mind, troubled waters, here you go. You double-minded fool, you're unstable in all your ways. Because you'd have not peace up here. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, the peaceful waters. Oh, but look, the heathen, they keep raging because their kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the, the earth melted. Hey, listen, folks, once you get this idea, you're going to start seeing this all throughout the Bible. He leadeth me behind, uh, beside the still waters. He leadeth me to the green pastures. If you learn to, to calm your mind. And look, listen folks. I am one of the most highly ADHD people you've ever probably met in your life. Huh, Brother Gary? Definitely up there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been pacing this floor for the last two hours. I have. I'm, I'm, I'm very highly active. But when it comes time to steal my mind to think about this stuff, guess what happens? It's stilled. I control that area. It's mine now. 
And the only person I led into that tabernacle is my father and his son. That's it. And in that place I have peace. Lift up. Listen, folks, we got to rise above. To rise above, one cannot be lowering themselves down. And I did that. Oh, Choya, come on. Two weeks, well, it's been two weeks ago when I was constantly getting upset over this stuff. I was lowering myself down. Brother Choya said, hey, man, you got to stop that, buddy. You got to, well, hey, I can take correction from anybody. I did. I needed to stop it. You know, it's the very fact that we think we can solve a problem. We're going to solve killing by what? More killing. We're going to solve debt by what? More debt. Hey, folks, these ideas just don't work. You can't, it, it just, it, it, it's impossible. I don't even know how they make us believe these ideas, but it's so contrary to good common sense. It's so contrary. And it doesn't take a lot of thinking to figure it out. You just got to stop looking at that black box and that black cube. Luke 21, 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to pass, then look up and lift your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Where's the Son of Man splitting the, split the clouds at, folks? Hey, listen, man. The world can be just as bad as the world wants to be. But I'll be doggone if I'm going to allow myself to be just like the world. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be. And how can you say you have faith if you continue to act like that? Well, let's first go into discussions. How this is obtained. Y'all know all these, wh where y'all think all these badges come from? Military. Victor Hugo made a great quote one day. He said, one withstands the invasion of armies. One does not withstand the invasion of ideas. All right, so this is the U.S. Army Civil Affairs and Psychological Operations Command, the first one, the airborne. The verbum vincit, y'all know what that means? That means to conquer by wor what? Word. To conquer by word. By sword, deed, and word is the other one. Persuade, change, and influence. And here's another great one you'll love. You've just been fucked by psyops. And I actually pronounced it. Sorry about that, folks, but we did it. Because physical wounds heal. What does that mean? What does that mean? You control psychological. I'm sorry for that, folks. I, should, I, just, I just read it instantly. I'm sorry. I should have beat that out. But they know. They know that grasping... This, the body what? Body follows. They know where the war is. The battle is in, in the minds of men. I'm probably going to edit that out. I didn't like that. Hacking hearts and minds, and this is a real deal now. Let's go, let's go do this. This is another mimetic warfare document. Let's see if I can find it. This is it. And this is another hor horrible deal. This is an open publication. I mean, it's open to all the whole network. This is hacking hearts and minds and how and all this other stuff. It goes along with the medic warfare document that I showed y'all in the past. Um, for many of us in the social media wor world, it seems obvious that more aggressive communication tactics and broader warfare through trolling and memes is necessary, inexpensive, an easy way to help destroy the appeal and morale of our common enemies. Well, who do you think the common enemy is, folks? Who do you think's the enemy if all psychological warfare is aimed at the people watching the TV? I was not the first to develop the concept of mimetic warfare. Michael B. Broser, a Marine Corps officer, mentioned it a decade earlier in his 2006 paper, Mimetics, a Growth Area Industry in U.S. Military Operations. I've shared that on this channel before. I've got it printed out. It's in the file cabinet. The concept of mimetic warfare has roots in meme theory. In the context of social media, many people think of memes as funny images with text across them. 
However, the term, term meme is a much broader and deeper concept coined by Richard Dawkins in his 1976 bestseller, The Sel Selfish Gene. In simplest terms, memes are units of cultural, cultural transmission, behaviors, ideas, styles that spread from person to person. Dawkins attributes cultural evolution to the most successful memes, stating memes are to culture what genes are to life. Just as biological evolution is driven by the survival of the fittest genes in the gene pool, cultural evolution may be driven by the most successful memes. Memetics is the study of memes and information transfer. Social media is designed for what? What's the real design of social media? What, what was life like before social media? Well, not just that, but you went and actually saw people. Now everybody's got Facebook friends. What's a Facebook friend? That's not a friend. That's a digital, that, just a digital image. Not friends. It draws from a variety of fields such as evolutionary psychology, neuroscience, marketing, and biology. Memetics is less interested in the truth of a meme than its ability to spread and influence. The trends, expressions, and ideas we share are all forms of memetics. Who spreads the lies like wildfire? Well, the news starts it, but not even the news. What a, Media, social media, we do it willingly because we're part of memetic warfare. And once you, once you know this unseen mechanism, this psycholo listen, psychological torture is what Americans have been put through. The ideas planted within do more damage than the reality that is not because you believe it to be so. So if you believe it to be so, let's go back to Job. Everything that I feared has come upon me. Everything that I was afraid of is now, has now come nigh. What do you think that's for? We build this reality. The false light, the lie, the deception, the non-reality, the negative, the black Rubik's Cube. It doesn't matter which way you turn this thing. What is it? It's always black. It's always void. It's not in reality. That's why you think it's an accident, it's a black cube? It's no accident. Matthew 6, 33, but seek you first. Hold up, let's, let's back that up. Let's make sure we get this because this is very important. Seek you first. What's the first thing we're supposed to do? Seek. seek. The kingdom of God. Does it say anything else but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you? Here's the major deal. Man, if I could go back 12 years when I started researching all the occult and everything else, I wish I would have had the knowledge now. I would have sought the kingdom of God first, but I had no nowhere to base that knowledge on. No way. No way. My whole life had been completely programmed and every idea and every thought and every taste and every feel that I've ever had was programmed into me. Not one individual I'd met in my entire life had, had any intention of setting my mind free. Nobody. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall uh, take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What are you worried about tomorrow for? You've got you to finish this day. And here's the, here's the most important part. You know, people say they have faith all the time. Well, that, that, let me ask this. If you walk around worried, is that faith? No. Cannot be. It is the opposite of faith. It's in fear. Faith is a positive mental attitude that cannot be taken away through worry or fear. It is an inner knowing that will not be swayed, nor are you willing to accept another negative position. Just, there is no other position. Worry is a lack of faith. When we worry, we expect things to go wrong. Well, hold up, folks. If we expect things to go wrong, what usually happens? All that I have feared has come upon me. I challenge everyone to move their kingdom. Come out of her, my people, that you accept not of her plagues. Install the new Jerusalem. Make the new heaven and new earth. Accept the Father and the Son into the temple. Cleanse it, purify it, 
Whiter than snow, it will make you. Peace and joy shall be the rest of your days because you will be perfected in his rest. Remove yourself from the black cube. And we'll do a little bit of this. What's Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome is, is when you're, you start to love your torturer. That means the captive starts to have feelings for his torture. So let me, let me, let's play this out. One of the things that's an irrefutable fact in this, 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 this latest happening with the COVID-19 and everything, one thing that's an irrefutable fact, they stole middle America's retirement. Stole it. Flat out. All you got to do is go talk to people like my neighbor Fred and millions and millions and millions of others. 200, 300, 400,000. Now let me show you something, folks. Everybody's worried about communism starting tomorrow. It's already started and they're showing you. They stole the money from everybody and they turned it around and redistributed it back out with the stimulus checks. And y'all don't think y'all in communism, socialism? Hello, folks. You walk around with a card that's called a social security card. That means you're a card-carrying communist. Hello. I'm just saying. But this is how the social uh, social programming, re, programming works and the psychological torture works. The abuser, the oppressor, turns around to the people after it psychologically tortured them. It psychologically manipulates them for a full month or however long this goes and turns around and says, oh, but I love you. Here's something. And those who are hostages go, oh, I knew you loved me. William Colby, the CIA owns every one of any significance in the media. William Casey, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. James Angleton, head of the CIA counterintelligence, 1954 to 1974. Deception is a state of mind and the mind of the state. Let me repeat that. Deception is a state of mind and is the mind of the state. What's the intention? of the state. Mind control that uses torture turns the situation around and makes relief of pain a reward. Oh, come on, you can't tell me that's out of the uh, MK Ultra handbook. It is. They, take, they take, take and turn around a painful experience and give you a reward. If a person is hurting you physically in an extreme and painful way, they say to you, the pain will stop if you do what I tell you, which works to establish the type of discipline response. Now, you can't tell me you don't recognize this. No one is forcing anybody to stand six foot from each other. No one's forcing anybody to quarantine themselves. Nobody's forcing anybody to shut down their, their shops and their businesses. But what are the people doing? It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And that comes from Jiddu Krishnamurti. Mind control uh, defined. Mind control can take on many forms uh, from overt brainwashing to subliminal messages, trauma based techniques, social engineering, or simply peer, peer pressure. But in all cases, when one submits to another person's belief or orders, whether by force or blind acceptance, they are, by definition, giving their mind to another. They are mind controlled. Thus, learn to use your mind if somebody else will. So the lawless one, the son of perdition, sits inside the temple of, of the Most High, proclaiming himself to be the Most High, and is not supposed to be in that tabernacle. If you allow somebody else to come in, sit in. Period. End of discussion. Martial law. So let's do this. Everybody's worried to death about martial law. How long has martial law been in effect in this country, folks? We should know in this Bible study since 1863. 150 years. Yeah. Brother Gary said 150 years. What happened? How do we know that to be fact? How do we know the Liber Codes is, is what's law? How do we know Unidrot and UCC is what we operate? Contract law, Lex Mercatoria. Well, we've proven this time and time again. Well, let me ask this, folks. There, there is some out there that believe that force is about to happen. Why is force not going to happen? Can anybody give me the answer? 
Well, why would you go to force when we do it without force? And second, second option, when you do force, you broke commercial liability. They will never give up commercial liability because their entire system is built off of commercial liability. That is from the Vatican. That is from the Unidrot. That's from UCC codes. It's all of it. Everything is built off of commercial liability. Everything, all conquest is by consent. And once you recognize that, you'll know that it's not coming by force. Oh, they'll jump around, monkey around, and do everything else, but they're going to ask for your signature at the end because it's consent. They'll do everything in the world, everything in the book. I'll throw everything at you. And they'll go, hey, but you need to sign this. <laughs> President Lincoln acted without prior congressional approval because Congress was not in session in the outbreak of war. So how did he reconvene Congress, folks? He did the first executive order, initiating 70,000 troops to bring, bring Congress back at what? Gunpoint. On that occasion, Lincoln explained his actions and asked Congress to consent to what he had done during an unprecedented national emergency. Hold, hold up. What did he ask him to do? He asked him to consent. And what did they eventually do? They acquiesced. And, and his July 4th, 1861 message to Congress, President Lincoln said no choice was left but to call out the war power of the government and so to resist force employed by, for its destruction by force for its preservation trusting that Congress would readily ratify them. They didn't. Nothing's legal in this system from 1863 forward, folks. Nothing. Not in the sense that it's constitutional and of a republic. It is not of a republic. And you can stop right here. Lincoln's uh, uh, suspended habeas corpus too, right? You know... The fact of the matter is this. They've done it without firing one bullet. All they have to do is start moving the equipment around. Everybody sees the equipment moving. Everybody shares the equipment moving. Everybody's freaking out. This is the last one. Hey, it's a big one. No doubt. It's a big one. But it should show you just how much they don't have to use force. There's very few like me or Gary, or any of us in here, or any of you out there that will not submit. But I'll say this. I think they miscalculated this time. And that's because I have a positive outlook. I have an outlook of, of love, peace, and happiness. Why do, I think, why do I think they messed up this time? I think they miscalculated. Because everyone's going outside. Not just that. Well, that's a good, that's a good, that's a, I like, I like, I like, everybody did start interacting with each other again. That, that's true. The normies, a lot of normies saw this time. Now, you could ask my neighbor, Mr. Fred, about Trump, and it, everything in this world was Donald Trump's the best thing since sliced bread, son. You know, he's my hero, we, he, whatever. I had a conversation with him the other day. He's, he walks out uh, as I'm pulling in. He's like, I think you're right. I think you're right, Brandon. I don't see any evidence of this corona anywhere I go. That's because there is no evidence. Well, then you have to be, you have to understand that this is played out on a battlefield other than the physical. It's being played out by principalities and powers in spiritual places and high places, and you're allowing them to win by giving over your mind. Quit allowing them to win. The only way you can stop it is, is to stop letting them sit in the seat. So what we're going to do right here, this is just a little piece. We're getting, going to get into this uh, a lot more next week. I'm just going to prove a point that everything's about commercial liability. And if you don't recognize that commercial liability is what, what holds the house of cards up, listen, folks, when they break God's law and they start forcing, they'll lose their power quickly. They know this. Make no mistake, the, the rulers know this. This isn't a game. They, this, 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 this system, this conspiracy is vast and it's conscripted, but one thing about it, they know the rules to the game. Instructions for the Government of Armies of the United States in the Field, Libra Code, 24th, April 1863. <clears throat> All right, so the Libra Code is what uh, constituted the war of the Civil War, folks, if y'all don't know that. 
Section 2, public and private property of the enemy, protection of persons and especially of women, of religion, the arts and sciences, punishment of crimes against the inhabitants of hostile countries. Article 38, Article 38 says private property, unless forfeited by crimes or by offenses of the owner, can be seized only by way of military necessity for the support or other benefit of the army or, or of the United States. If the owner has not fled, that means run away, the commanding officer will cause receipts to be given. Okay, which may serve the spoilated owner to obtain indemnity. Well, we'll get into the indemnity later, but right now we're going to talk about this warehouse receipt. Care to know what a warehouse receipt is? We will look together. Just to prove that we are not in a republic, we're not in a democracy, we're not in anything. Because captured goods has been spoiled, and for that a receipt has been given. Do this together. Birth marriage certificates now appear to at least qualify as warehouse receipts. A warehouse receipt, is, is a, a, which is considered a document of title, may be a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with inventory of security. What's your birth certificate? It's on bond paper, is it not? Well, there's your receipt for captured goods. We'll go to this next one. And just to make sure that the UN agenda, Agenda 2030, and all these other things are still stuck on this system. Let's just make sure. United Nations, what does this say right here? This is indicator 16.9, proportion of children under five years of age whose births have been registered. This is the act to make everybody registered on earth. This is the operating system moving forward. It is the Lex Mercatoria. It is the law merchant system, period. And it operates and it conquests by consent. And there's the Libra codes if people want to go look at them. This is the instruction manual. And these are part of the Geneva Conventions of 1949. Just to make sure that y'all y'all don't understand. This, this, this isn't Brandon bringing up off of Johnny Tutu's blog. You see the International Committee of the Red Cross? It's real. So anyway. The matrix is already formed. We've born into the matrix, folks. We got to quit giving life to it. We got to quit giving life to the image of the beast. So, commercial liability. Let's make sure I know what I'm talking about. This is the United States of America. It's, it's the corporatocracy. All right. So, the corporatocracy, everything that's aligned with the United States government, that is part and parcel of of this uh, overt uh, takeover of our nation. Those companies are going to continue to make money. Walmart. Amazon, all these mega corporations that's already part. All they've done is go destroy middle America again. Why? They're making us dependent on them. It is the United States Corporation, folks. It's been incorporated since the Organic Act of, hold on, 1871. Not the government which owns the United States military and everything else that comes under the term federal. The fa privately owned corporation called the United States is the holding company, if you like, in the 50 states or its subsidiaries. Law, merchant, lex mercatoria, commerce law, contract law, uniform commercial code, unidrot, and all other forms of the merchant trade, regulatory, paperwork, code, statute, never loses liability. As soon as they lose liability, what do they do? They recuse themselves. It is the consent which gives it its power. Everything will always require your signature to complete the transaction to the other side. The action that brings you back to the other side. It means you've turned away from the Father and you've decided to transact yourself, go over by action to the beast. Force is only realized. Fear is the real contagion. Terrorism is the best political weapon for nothing. Drives people harder than a fear of sudden death. Booga, booga, booga. And the masses go, ah! Scared to death. Scared to die. And what's the only thing guaranteed? Some people say pay taxes, but I don't pay taxes. Jesus. Death. death. From the moment you're born, you're what? Dying. Dying. So this is, I want to I wanna do this together. Because I want to show you that even in the new bills, now this is from the Forbes, the new coronavirus stimulus bill introduces digital dollar and digital watts, okay? 
This is from that, that deal. This is Maxine Waters uh, Bill 6321 or something like that. But y'all can stop and go find this article. This is the, the this is this is the reason I'm putting this up here because I want to de define one one section. I want to show you that even in their new bills, as this Corona deal is coming along, there's there's differences between ideas. All right, so number five, it says, well, let's read up here, pass-through digital dollar wallet. The term pass-through digital dollar water wallet means a digital wallet or account maintained by a member bank on behalf of a qualified in individual. Okay. Where such qualified individual is entitled to a pro rata share of pooled reserve balance that the member bank maintains at any Federal Reserve Bank. So, all right, well, we got to find out who the qualified individual is, right? Well, okay. Well, number five, qualified individual defined. The term qualified individual means any individual other than a what? A non-resident alien. Well, well, folks, why do you think that's important? What's the di what's a non-resident alien, folks? It's a non-contractor with these people. The non-residents, he's exempt. And let's go prove this. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Reside, residence, resident. The negatives non-resident and non-resident are in frequent use. Residence. The legal definitions of the cognate terms resident and domicile or domicile vary within the circumstances of the case and the mental constitution of judges and authors. While residence generally imports personal pres presence. One may have a domicile in a place from which he is absent most of the time. Of course, they think we domicile right now in the District of Columbia, don't they? All right. Resident also implies more than a temporary sojourn. Hold up. Stop right there. What are we in our faith? Sojourners. You think it's by accident that it's in the good book? You think it's by accident they, they come post up your zip codes and put the addresses in, in, in your front of your house. You think it's by accident that the census papers are sent out to who? Oh, you think that's accidental, huh? You think residents accident? And you know, folks, the reason why I'm doing this is about 200 of y'all that sent me emails freaking out about I'm about to break the law because I got a census package. Well, folks, if your name's resident, then go ahead and fill it out. My name's not resident. I don't know who that's directed to. I know one thing. It's against the law to open anybody else's mail up. Residence means a fixed and permanent abode or dwelling place for the time being as contradistinguished from a mere temporary locality of, uh, of existence. Hey, folks, do you ever wonder why the, uh, the disciples and the Messiah, they were sojourners, they walked around, they never had a, they never had a home? Go legally find out what a home is. Everybody talking about around here, oh, my place. Yeah, right. Pay taxes, don't you? Yeah, you do. I don't own nothing. This isn't my place. Tomorrow could be my last day in this residence, in this house. It'd be it. I don't care. Don't bother me any. Load the boat up, go. That's all I want, my boat. <laughs> <laughs> residence. Uh, uh, ordinarily, the place of one's permanent domicile rather than his temporary d d uh, abode. Denotes permanency of occupation as distinct from lodging, boarding, or temporary, but does not include as much as domicile, which requires an intention continued with residence. So, folks, when you recognize this stuff, that they have entrapped us with our words, that we are the ones who always sign and accept the benefits. What's free mail? Anybody know? If, you, if it, free mail, the fact that it says prepaid postage free mail means what? You're receiving benefits. So as long as you're receiving a benefit, what does what does the legal maxim say? You must bear the disadvantage. Period. If you accept a benefit, you bear the disadvantage of it. Resident, literally, one who sits, abides, inhabits, or dwells in a particular place. A person so joining at a place is prima facie residing. It means it's only on it's only on its first appearance. And cannot be a resident of another place at the same time. Resident, international law, a minister, according to diplomatic language of a third order, less in dignity than an ambassador or envoy. Of course. Why 
are they always lowering you down in status? Capitio dementia, the maximum lowering. That is what it is. It is the maximum lowering. This term formerly related only to the continuance of the minister's stay, but now it is confined to ministers of this class. Well, hold up, folks. I got a problem with this because you know what? I'm an ambassador of righteousness. That means I've got diplomatic immunity. Because no one rules me. No man uh, rules me. That's from Bouvier's Law uh, Dictionary. Census, resident, you think it is still an accident that all these bills still retain remedies and signify a difference between a statutory slave and an, amb and an ambassador of Christ? A sojourner of the faith? Well, no, because they have to. They have to. You know, I've, I've watched more, more Americans, quote, unquote, I can't believe all these Mexicans up in here, these non-resident aliens getting free health care, free licenses, and all that. Woo! Mad, right? You know why they get it? It's human rights. Only the slaves have to foot the bill. Only the slaves foot the bill. 1 Peter 1.16, because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. That means to separate yourself, come out of her, my people. Well, listen, folks, if your mindset and your mouth doesn't separate you from the rest of society, you're not separate. You're double-minded. I have extreme confidence that this world is the Father's, and His will shall be done. It'll be on His time frame. Not on Brandon's. And if you call on the Father, who without respect to persons, we don't respect them persons, the personas, mask wearers, judges according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ of a lamb without blemish and without spot. What's the blood? Is it, what's in the blood, folks? The life's in the blood. Who verily was for, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you? What's a manifestation, folks? We've gone over this. Manifest means become real. It's, it's in here. It, it, he reveals himself to you. And then where does he, where does he reside once he's manifested? Well, it's up here. He tells you, I and the Father shall dwell within you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So what's one of the things that the dead represents in scriptures, folks? What does the dead? Let the dead bury the dead. What does that mean? Spiritually dead. If you're two, you're spiritually reborn, you're dead. You're dead in your sins. You've missed the mark. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. These are important, folks. When your heart changes, you change. Then your mindset of the world around you changes. Then you start affecting people all the time, everywhere you go. Or you try to. Or you get people that look at you like you cuckoo. It happens. <laughs> but, I mean, it happens. You know, guys, the importance of our mind being at ease, having that peace within, is, is this is this... There is no greater gift that comes from above. And I'm only a witness to it probably, I don't know, two, three months now, where I've actually really been at a different level. Um, it's, it's fairly new. It's not, it's not something that I've been at for a long time. This is a new, this is a new realm for me. But I know it to be 100% truth. I know that every day I wake up, I don't wake up thinking about the coronavirus or anything else. I don't do that. I wake up and I'm thankful, and the first thing I do is walk around. Well, I wake up way too early anyway, but the first thing I do is start looking in my Bible or, or giving thanks or praying, something along, something beneficial to me for the rest of the day. 
The last thing I do during the day is turn uh, go looking at news. And a matter of fact, I haven't looked at news in two weeks. We did yesterday. We looked at the Drudge Report just for a test. I said, look, let's go read the Drudge Report for shock and awe value to see how bad it is out there. We go open up the Drudge Report. And it's like death. It's, uh, why would we do it? Dictionary of Law, 1893, defines sojourn as something more than to travel and implies to a temporary as contradistinguished from a per permanent res res residence. Well, folks, why are we sojourners? Because this is our temporary home. Is this permanent? So not. Well, it's not. A Christian man is a sojourner, not a permanent resident. He is the same as a purely definitive uh, temporary resident of this world. He's a part-time dweller. No Christian is a permanent resident in the world, for we are not of this world. John 15, 19, If you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Hey, listen, folks, let me tell you something right now. I will not, I will not allow the, the words of the world, the world, the old man, to con con consistently live in me. I'm not saying I always rise above it. There's times where I fail. It happens. But I go back to bringing myself back out of it. But I'm not going to let, let that fear, I'm not going to let worry, I'm not going to let hate, I'm not going to let malice dwell within my temple. It's out. I cast it out. And I promise you, folks, if you learn to cast it out, if you really learn to cast it out and you get back into your subconscious mind and you allow peace and love to enter in, you're going to see a change that you never thought possible. John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be de delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. We are permanent ambassadors of righteousness and emissary, emissary, emissaries, there we go, for and of the king of kings. Slow down, Brandon. And his kingdom of heaven. When's the kingdom of heaven, folks? Yeah, that's where it's at. But when it, what time is it? Right now. Right, right now. Okay, so if the kingdom of heaven is at hand and Brandon's always in his negative thoughts, what happens? I'm poo-pooing on the kingdom of heaven. I'm foregoing the kingdom of heaven. Do, you, do we understand that? Do we grasp that? We should join here. Nothing is in this realm can you take with you the next. Hey, listen, folks. We should be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. But I'm going to tell you right now, when you move that kingdom from a place of fear to a place of love, a place from of worry to a place of peace, something changes. Spiritually, psychologically, physically changes. Only those out there who have done this movement will understand what I'm, understand what I'm talking about right now. Something changes. And it's a blessing. Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, not with your eyes. You can't see it. It comes from an understanding, my friends. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It has to be within you. Why does it have to be within you? If it was anywhere else, man would come through, uh, break through and steal. Uh, set not up uh, for treasures uh, where uh, uh, set, set not your treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves can break through and steal. Set up treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break through and steal. Well, where's the only place a thief can't break through and steal, folks? Your mind. Right here. That's right. Good answer, Braden. I'm proud of you. Your mind. Little Bray Bray got involved. Good job, buddy. I like it. It's the only place that can't be stolen. That's why it was given. It's the greatest gift ever given to man. It is the most important piece of machinery ever built. And these psychological torturers know how to use it against us. But I promise you, when you start vibrating at that higher frequency of love, peace, there's not a thing in this world that can touch you. You can sit in the lion's den with Daniel. You can sit in all these places burning up like uh, Meshach. Uh, it doesn't matter. What death is gain. I'm not afraid to go home anymore, folks. And when you're not afraid to go home, it's not... It, it, 
If I was to walk around here and steadily talking doom and gloom, well, then I really don't have faith that this is the Father's kingdom. Nor do I, I, I and, and believe me, folks, there's not a whole lot of people that understand this system quite as well as I do and how hopelessly uh, enslaved I know what it looks like we can be, but we're not. Make no mistake, there's remedies for everything. They cannot chain down a mind that refuses to be chained, period. Famine of the word, Jeremiah 31, 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. They always do. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahuwah. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahuwah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now here, here, here's the most important thing, folks. When you know where this law was written, where you know all these things were, were done and you recognize the time that we're living in right now, which is what I'm reading next, Amos 8, 11. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will send the famine in the land. What do you think the famine in the land is for? Do you think it's just for the word, the written word? Or do you think it's, it's weightier issues, the love, peace, happiness? <coughs> Not of famine or bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, of the Father. Now, Matthew 23 meant comings and everything else. He said, yeah, that's great. You should do those things too, but you should have paid attention to the weightier issues of the law, which is what? Justice, mercy, peace, love, all these things. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahuwah and shall not find it. You know why they can't find it? Because the physical man Esau, who would sell the invisible birthright for a pot of porridge. I understand this, folks. I understand this analogy, what, what I'm talking about. Esau would sell his birthright, which is invisible, for a pot of porridge. That man, that physical man, the one, one that lives in the physical world, can't see the spiritual world. And as long as you're not in the spiritual, you are in the land of the dead. You're in the black cube. You're in non-reality. Therefore, in that reality, you are controlled. And there's a complete famine of the land. It doesn't matter. Those people programmed, and each one of you know this. Each one of you in here have talked to people that you, are, you know are hopelessly programmed. And you can watch the pain in their eyes when they start twitching and you try to break the programming. It's like they can't deal with it. That's the famine. All right, so this is uh, second to last slide. I had fully intended to return this week back to what I deem vitally important topics, the law, birth certificates, social security numbers, but it serves us zero purpose to discuss these topics while the minds of many are still at dis-ease. How, uh, how can I spend a whole topic discussing something of, of vital importance when everybody's so worried about the reality going on around us. It's impossible. None of you are going to focus. Nobody's going to really pay attention. This world right now, the things that we envision going on, affects us too much. Here's the most important part. Matthew 8, 26, And he saith unto them, Why are you, uh, uh, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Why? Why are you fearful? And then he gets up and he calms the waters and they go, what manner? Here's the key. Why are you afraid? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was great calm. The famine of the word is a loss of faith and a detachment of the weightier matters of this life. Love, kindness, strength, faith, fear, fearlessness, love of the brethren, unity of mind and spirit. These things should be done first. Seek you first the kingdom of God. All the other stuff will take care of itself if you first. I wish I would have done this a long time ago, but now I recognize and understand how, how truthful this is. 
I, now I seek that kingdom first every day. Every day. Nothing else. I'll get in here looking at the law later. I'll do all that stuff later. Faith comes from the Latin, fides, which, come, which is your fidelity, right? Fido, to trust. A belief. Here we go. This is important because people don't understand what faith, hope, and love, and all these things mean. Define the terms. What you think something means is totally different. Here's faith. The ascent of the mind to the truth of what is declared by another. Resting on his authority and veracity without other evidence, the judgment that which another states or testifies is the truth. Well, hold up, folks. There's only one that dwells in my temple that I give veracity or I give enough uh, authority in my life. It sure ain't no man. It sure ain't no Donald uh, Orange Pumpkin Head Trump or no Bar Barack Obama that can sit in my temple and I vote for that I have faith in. Hebrews 11.1. 1, let's do this together, right? Now, faith is a substance. Well, hold up, folks. How can faith have substance in the first place? This is a complete paradox, isn't it? Because faith is the substance. It's what manifests in the reality later because it's not a half-butt half saying. You don't just say it with your lips. You actually believe it within your heart. And that is how it's substance. That is how it has value. That's how it has tangible deal because emotions are tied to it. Of the things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It's within this temple that everything, when aligned correctly, it will manifest into our reality. Hope comes from the Latin cupio. Hope is accompanied, accompanied with actual knowing. A desire of some good. So hope and faith go together. Do, recognize this. The desire within is the hope that the faith will, shall be done. Accompanied with at least a slight expectation of obtaining it. <laughs> well, folks, I'm going to take it a step further than just a slight expectation. I know that what I ask for my Father, believing, what happens? I shall receive. He didn't say you might receive. He said what? You shall. And I don't do it from the temptations or the desires for my own flesh. I do it for love, peace, joy, and happiness for everybody in this world. I don't want the material things. I don't want mammon. I don't want any of it. Hope, therefore, always gives pleasure or joy, whereas wish and desire, two totally different things. Let me back up because this is important. Hope differs from wish and desire in this, that it implies some expectation of obtaining the good desired or the possibility of possessing it. Hope, therefore, always gives pleasure or joy, whereas wish and desire may produce or be accompanied with what? Pain or anxiety. Hey, it's important, folks, to know what your words mean. Faith, hope, and love. Charity, right? Are some good things he gave us, and everybody sings about these songs. They don't know what it means, though. They have no earthly idea what it means. So I wish upon a star. Well, hope, well, you want some pain and anxiety, go ahead. Our words have frequencies. They have vibration to them. I'm just telling you. It's been there the whole time. So my faith is aligned and my hope is that each and every one of you out there watching this and each and one of you in here today leave this study group with a new mindset that you are not going to allow these psychological torturers to enter into your kingdom and take over the, the, the realm, the, uh, the tabernacle, the pavilion, your safety, where the Father dwells. Light study. I say it was a light study, but I got I got a little worked up a few times, didn't I? <laughs> I'm worried about a lot of people out there, though. Uh, Brother Gary can attest to this. He knows this. I had planned on doing a totally different study. Uh, you know, we were going to get into the law. I, I, you see all the the things I've got up on the, on on the uh, on my computer here. Look. All this is all about the law up here. All of it's about the law. We're, talk, we're talking about how to mail stuff, everything else. Everything's about the law up here. Okay? The Father put it on my heart, though, and just the fact that I've gotten so many emails and everything else about people freaking out 
and everything else. I just knew this was a better study this morning. And then it was really confirmed when my grandma walked through the door. You know, that it was confirmed. How? Don't worry about me. They just, just please don't worry about me. I'm gonna be fine. I'll be fine. I know I'll be fine. But I'm worried about a lot of you in the current state of your mind. I'm praying from you all. But what is transpiring in this country? Listen, folks. When, when they when they initiated this this agenda, it was already done. They knew that it would complete everything that they wanted to do. They've got all the information they ever need. We are informants of ourselves every day. And now they have pushed a new normal on this country. Now we are in such a nanny state that the government now can shut down the entire country for a little less of a cold. Hey, folks, guess what? I mean, that's communism. I hate to break it to you. (laughs) <laughs> what do you, you think that's republic? It's not even democracy. We don't step past democracy. <laughs> Welcome to your new communist states of America. This isn't the republic that we have been led to believe. We are in the one world order. And I'm going to prove this. Unidrot is what runs UCC. Okay. This conquest is by consent. Take back the kingdom. Today is a wonderful day to enjoy friends and family. That means go enjoy friends and family after this is over. Drot. Unidrot. What's Unidrot? Mama, you know what Unidrot is. You should. It's what runs the UCC. We pay copyright fees to the Unidrot uh, each year uh, to operate the UCC code. That's who we pay is uh, Unidrot. Unidrot is one drot, Okay. Right, justice, equity, law, the whole body of law, also a right. This term exhibits the same ambiguity. Hold on, what's ambiguity mean? If you have ambiguous language, that means what? Not understood. There you go. Deception operates in what? Ambiguity. Generalities operate in deception. Okay. Okay. On the one hand, these terms answer to the Roman just and thus indicate law in the abstract, considered as the foundation of all rights or the complex of underlying moral principles which impart the character of justice to all positive law. They impart the character, it looks like. Understand what you're reading. To positive law. What's positive law? Anybody know? Man's law. Period. All positive law is man's law. Or give it an ethical content. Taken in this abstract sense, the terms may be adjectives, in which case they are equivalent to just or nouns, in which case they may be paraphrased by the expressions justice, morality, or equity. On the other hand, they serve to point out a right. Well, hold up, folks. It it can't be one or the other. It's got to be something. It's got to be the law of non-contradiction says it either is or it isn't. Well, I hate to break it to the folks. The UCC code, the Unidrot, commercial law, the Lex Mercatoria is not law. In, in law. In the latter signification, right or right or right is the correlative of duty or obligation. Hold up. There we go. That's what I wanted to get to because the whole system operates on what? Consideration or offer, agreement, and then what? Well, once it's agreement is the consent, and then it operates on duty or obligation. Once the consent is obtained, force can be applied. Because the contract is the letter of law. Let your yea be yea and your nays be nay. By thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So if I'm cognizant of of the words that I speak and I will never submit to or consent to any of these psychological torturers, what power do they exert over me? None. In this former sense it may be considered as opposed to wrong, injustice or the absence of the law. Well, we might, might state that matter-of-factly, right? No, no problem with that. Joint has the further ambiguity that it is sometimes used to note the existing body of law considered as one whole or the sum total of a number of individual laws taken together. See just, right, or right. Of course, y'all would know that right word. That would be the third right. Well, welcome to the fourth right. It's already instituted, been instituted for a long time. All right, folks.
I had a great study. I hope it, I hope this blesses each and one of you out there. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for anointing me with this message. I hope the seed continues to fall on good ground. I hope the, heart, the hearts and the minds of the people open up to accept this message. Take back the kingdom and let the Father and the Son dwell within. Let thy word not return unto thee void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything where you sent it. In your precious Son's name we pray. All right, folks, that's it.